Okay, so it's about seven below here. Let's go out and see. Scramble egg time for them. I'm gonna put some poultry cell in there and mix it with their scratch grains and some other goodies. It's not really appetizing to me, but they will love it. Here is our first stop off. This is in the detached garage. Let me see, it's about 30 in here. So all of these chickens were out for a little bit. I did bring the bantams in after yesterday just because the air temperature is getting a lot colder today and I wanted to give them a little bit of a break. Um, they're in the main coop, not the shed bantam coop, which stays a little bit warmer. This is one of my legerns and you can see she's getting a little bit of frostbite on the tips of her comb. She um, is insisting on sleeping out in the enclosed run. So I've been making those chickens go inside, but she's just asking for some frostbite most likely. And I really hate watching them have frostbite. And here's my rooster. This is his, let's think, his second or third winter. I think it's his, he might be three mm -hmm. coming up. But um, he has gotten really significant frostbite on that big comb of his. And you'll notice he's kind of naturally dubbed at this point. And I've been trying to manage it by bringing him in when it gets really cold. So he came in yesterday. He's not happy about it. But look at his beautiful comb. He's not dealing with frostbite. He'll go back out tomorrow morning. I think one of the big misconceptions that people are having right now because there's been so much um, hype and drama about wind chills, not that wind chills don't matter if you're out walking around, but there's a big difference between wind chill temperature and just the actual air temperature. So we are at negative seven right now, but the wind chill temperatures are like, you know, 25 below. Um, these chickens are not in the wind. We have this nice enclosed run for them. There's not wind out here. And when they're in the coop, it's not, you know, there's not draft, there's not wind. So they are basically in, they are basically seven below, which, you know, is colder than usual here for us in Northern Indiana, but um, it's, it's not undoable for them. They've been in the coop, I just let them out. So they were inside, but yesterday they were out here and it was you know three degrees and i came out and they were out here having a wonderful time it's sunny so that's warming it up a little bit in an enclosed space but but they're doing okay so uh, you know people we have had where the actual temperature gets down to 25 here we've had that happen and um they're cold they're they're suffering they're miserable that's way out of our norm do they die i mean if they're healthy they're not going to die but seven below chickens can do if they have a draft free you know draft free place with plenty of fresh water and some yummy treats so let's go see how the ones in the shed are doing that one is really um a really kind of warmer better insulated deal let's see what their temperature is so here's the bantam coop so i do have silkies in here and i see they've got a little bit of frost around their heads from condensation i have a couple of my last year's Hatches and chicks, they hang out in here for whatever reason, and a couple sparrows I hear running around. But the temperature in here is 22 degrees. So look at that. So it's much, much warmer in here. You know, 22 is nothing. They can definitely handle 22. And I'm gonna keep them close up again today, and it's just gonna get warmer because of the sun. They want their treats. Most of these are okay. The silkies I keep an eye on. They're a little more delicate, but I put a lot of straw in their little crate. I'll show you. The silkies sleep in that rabbit hutch and they have a lot of straw. I threw some straw down, so everyone's doing fine. If you notice, they're over there by the door. They actually wanna go outside, but I'm not gonna let them out today. I'm also gonna to try to dispel a few myths that I'm seeing circulating online. And I, by all means, don't know everything at all and have made plenty of mistakes, but this is maybe our 14th year or something with chickens. Some of those years being completely over the top. Um, we've had many winters in those 14 years and many very cold spells that have gotten down to, you know, 25. You can find some videos about it. Um, as I downsize here, and kind of move on with other things, but we'll always have chickens. But as I downsize, one of the things that I am going to do is do more winter hardy breeds. This is an Americana here, this pretty little 
anomaly of what used to be a black Americana. Um, this is Hope. She's a black Americana. I'm gonna go more chickens like that. You can see this little Australorp. She's a little cold. She's looking a little chilly and kind of puffed up there. Um, Hope's looking cold too. But the smaller combed breeds are gonna do better, I feel, in the winter. Everything I have is more of a winter, winter hardy breed, so they do okay, these Easter eggers in there. Um, I'm not gonna do roosters with big combs anymore. They just really, I feel, suffer and, and frostbite. Do they need heat? No, they don't need heat. Does it hurt them if you put one of those heat plates in there or do something? I mean, if you're keeping the thermostat at 70 for your chickens all winter and it's like the Northwest Indiana, yes, you're, you're gonna do harm to them. But this idea that if you put a heat plate in or even if you run heat, I know heat lamps, we've had, actually we've had like three fires here in the area just recently the last couple days of barn fires. See my little Australorps, they're cold. <laughs> they're looking a little puffy and cold. Um, we've had fires, so yes, don't use heat lamps. I've got some videos too of heat lamps. They are completely triple secure to the roof. I have run them when it's gotten down like 20 below. Um, I would do it again. I, I didn't do it for several years, but I'd do it again. It just seems to psychologically make the chickens feel better. Um, but golly, make sure they're secured and know that you're running a risk. Those nights that I've done it, I was up a lot checking and making sure. Um, know that you're running a risk for doing it. But, um, but chickens can handle the cold if it's not a huge if it's not a huge drop i mean if you live in florida and they're used to running around and it's 70 degrees in the winter and all of a sudden you get down to 20 or 30 yeah take precautions with your chickens but um you know generally they can withstand a drop of a couple days that's pretty cold just make sure they have good food food fresh water even hope's cold look at her it is cold out here and today we're only going to get to like three degrees but fortunately it's sunny so that sun might help them a little bit some of the newer chicken people out there and it's trial and error we all started i have taken chickens into garages um the whole flock pretty much when i started so do what you have to do to enjoy keeping your chickens and you feel good about it but it also you don't have to stress that they won't that they you know they won't be okay they'll be cold i'm cold out here um <laughs> they'll be cold but support them with good food with fresh water um you know, draft-free, wind-free areas that they can they can go in. And your chickens will make it through winter just fine. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you the next time. Here comes one of my Easter eggers. They are well-suited for this kind of cold.